Alright, what's up y'all, Tucker fan here. As we're about to tell today's video, we're here to showcase the layup that has broke the game in NBA 2K24. As you can see, we got the Demonis Sabonis layup package. This is for bigs only. You have to be 6'10 plus, and you have to have a 78 driving layup. Now, this build that I'm on has exactly that. 78 driving lay. As you can see, it has gold pro touch. That's where it caps out at, and also gold float game. So, check this out. This is the type of stuff that we're on. Now, as you can see on this last clip right here, I just hit him with the floater. So we're getting him to understand that he's got to step out on that. No more paint sitting or anything like that when you're playing against an inside big like this. Mind you guys, this build has 25 mid-range, 25 three-pointer. We've talked about this a little bit in this year's game, whether it's kind of hinting to you guys how that's a bonus layup is going to work, or also even just the fact that I've shown how powerful floaters can be even with the 25 mid-range and that it's kind of the saving grace to your range, supposedly, when it comes to being a slasher. But look at this. So the last one, I just hit him with the floater and I and this time I'm gonna bait him with the exact same movement and now he's gonna run up to it as if I'm shooting the floater and then as you can see he goes flying by me and I get the wide open dunk so we have a lot of clips like this in this one you can see I'm cheesing him with a triple threat we get past him on the driving dunk so now we got him ready to sag off a little bit now I'm gonna fake that I'm gonna do it the opposite way this time I'm gonna fake the inside and shoot the outside so we're, we're acting like I'm gonna do that again so we got him just mentally ready to back up and then as you can see we're just ready to hit this floater now mind you some of these times it's gonna be dependent on the opponent having only seen this either once or not at all but to be fair it's also gonna open up a lot more for me if they have to respect that far out just in general as me being a pure slasher so it's more of an accessory piece it's not something I'm gonna spam all game every game but as you can see it's my counter to people sitting paint because even though you see this mascot is really small and his interior defense really bad people who sit paint against a slasher whether it's even all the way down here into the paint it doesn't matter the dunk meter is gonna be really bad as long as they're between you and the basket no matter what their interior defense is we've already talked about that a lot in this year's game too so the floaters are really good counter to this now look at this guy <laughs> I'll show you guys this clip as well on Twitter but you can see he thinks he thinks it's sweet he thinks it's gonna be oh I get to sit inside I get to sit paint on this pure inside and it's gonna be all good but let me let me show you the tweet real quick all right so this one I actually put like I said on Twitter and I said he thought he was about to be sitting paint all game he didn't know about Sabonis and let me tell you it really is like a crazy thing so as you can see he's, he's not taking it seriously you know he's ready to just sit low and, and nothing's gonna happen unless I get ready to go in for the dunk in which case he was ready to go you know play me but now as you can see he's starting to he's starting to wisen up a little bit he's like okay it's Time to sit up and boom now we're able to take advantage of that and obviously we exploit the fact that he has to play me really high and we get past him for the easy dunk so as you can see a lot of <laughs> you know response to this just so everybody knows this is starter three required you have to hit starter three to get this animation anyway we are going to get into a couple gameplays now i'm gonna let you guys see some 1v1 gameplay of me using these in full game and how it's going to apply to me being able to actually use it in my arsenal a little bit so Again, this is 78 driving layup. You could go 80. That's what I had my original build. I just had to, I had to cut down a little bit on some budgeting stuff to be able to get the rebounding where I wanted it to be for competitive purposes. And that's what more so what I'm talking about is like 5v5. For fives, I don't think something like this is quite as game breaking, but if you are playing with your boys and they're really disrespecting your shot and more of like a five out offense like this build can do from time to time, you could definitely use that floater game with the Sabonis stuff 100%. And again, this is more so an accessory piece because I do prefer to utilize the driving and standing dunk meters 100%. And as you can see, the close shot, terrible, but it doesn't matter. Anyway, the rest of the build though, as you can see, this is what we're working with. And just so you know what I have for the 1v1 court and stuff like that. But yeah, also something I want to show you, check out the hot zones. So I didn't get the hot zone in the middle. You, you're going to see my hot zone in the middle is neutral. But I noticed when I was grinding for the hot zones, I found myself taking from the left and right wings a little bit more often than just the middle. With this Sabonis, you have to kind of take an angle that does put you into those wing areas. So as you can see, I grinded out the hot zones through playing career, and then I was like, well, let me just see if I can do it in the lethal, like go to the art of shooting gym. And yes, I got lethals on a build with 25 mid range. <laughs> As you can see, it's got the 25 mini, 25 three pointer and 27 close shot. And we got lethals in the mid range. So I'm here to showcase to you guys this gameplay now. I hope you enjoy. And if you do, feel free to drop a like. So if you're new to know, notice all good stuff. And like always, try one to 2000 likes. Also, if you guys didn't know, I'm pairing up with the NBA 2K Lab this year. So you can use code Laker for 20% off at checkout at their website. That's NBA2KLab.com. On this website is all types of really good statistical jump shot information. You can also test the jumpers on their website too. Plug the controller straight into your phone or to your PC. You can get early, green, late. It'll tell you where you need to adjust on that jump shot. Or if you don't know what jumper you want to run, you just go to their jump shot recommender. You punch in your height, the jump shot rating that you're working with, and then based on the milliseconds of timing that you get, 
it, it'll recommend you a jump shot. So again, if you want to use code Laker for 20% off at checkout, that's NBA2KLab.com. Appreciate you guys, and we'll get back to the video. All right, so for our first gameplay, we're going to be going against a 6'4 point guard. Now, for those of you that don't know how this game is playing, and you haven't really experienced the pain of playing a 6'4, yet they still get like ridiculous contests on your dunk meter, and even though they're super small, it's just how it works. You won't understand that it doesn't matter that he's a 6'4 as far as guarding me personally. Now, as far as guarding the floater, that does play a little bit of difference. But I just want to show you how this is going to be able to open up my game as far as like playing against anybody. It doesn't, it doesn't really matter in my personal opinion. I made the build a small forward, but that was not for the intention of playing smaller people on the 1v1. In case you guys don't know, one's court works where if you're a point guard through small forward, you play other point guard through small forwards. And then if you're a power forward or center, you play other power forwards and centers. Now, anyway, this guy is ending up, he's cooking a little bit. He gets this like three off right here. As you can see, he's able to get that to go. He gets to another midi right here. And it, it, it's really like a tough thing to guard for me because again, I'm a 6'10 big essentially playing on 1v1 court against a bunch of other point guards. And they're out here really cooking in the situations where I, even if I want to play for a chase down, it's still kind of hard. And I obviously have to respect their shot or else they're just going to knock them down too. And again this guy was already knocking him down just in general throughout the course of this game but as you can see even in this situation he is baiting me and bro hits a 53 percent contested standing lay i mean this dude's an offensive demon and then on on the next one you're gonna see he ends up going for this mid-range right here doesn't get that to go so we're able to get on the offense so finally we're gonna get into this stuff a little bit so for offense, as you can see, I'm going with this dunk meter early, but check this out. Look at this, fellas. This is what I'm talking about. He's a 6'4 point guard, and yeah, my meter size is nice and all, but I don't even get it to work. <laughs> so back to defense we go, back to fast forwarding a little bit. He ends up going for a layup right here that I'm fortunately able to just get a hand up on, and he misses it on a 17%. So now here we are into the offense. So I'm going to go and just kind of try and create a little bit. We're going to start off a little bit sweaty. We're going down into the paint. This is where I'm going to be, you know, in, in the action. It's going to be very consistent. I don't have to worry about it failing me very often. That's where if you want to call the floater kind of so much of an accessory piece to the point where it's not even competitively super like sweaty, because honestly, I could just go down to the paint like I am right here and probably just be able to get it to work nearly every single time if we're being completely honest. But against like bigger centers or anything like that who happen to sit paint, they're going to be taking up a whole lot more space, walling up, playing hands up D. I might get more bumps on them too. Like they might bump me and I'm going to just get stonewalled where I just lose the ball as well because they're just a bigger body, more removable enforcer, etc, etc. It makes a very big difference to have this in my in my game and in my arsenal. Anyway, let's get into some floater action right here. So it's going to be something I mainly want to attack with slash take. It's going to make it a lot easier to make them and it's a lot harder to guard them, period because I can hit them at a much more contested rate. So it's something that I feel very okay with resorting to when I have slash take. Even still though, without it, I'm perfectly fine with it. But I just want to show you guys the range this can be applied from and also the lack of contest that smaller people will get on this. I believe this is supposed to be based on challenger and perimeter defense. I could be wrong though. I'm, I'm not exactly sure. I know from distance, like I remember seeing that I got a, I got a contest on a layup from really far away on my 610. And it was the video that we tested the 25 interior defense where I didn't even have it upgraded on my build yet. And I did get challenger to pop up on a super contested, like long range layup. So I'm not sure if that's how it applies to floaters as well. As you can see right there though, this is another aspect of kind of what you saw earlier in the clip where I'm baiting him with this. I'm moving as if I'm going for the floater and you've seen it time and time again. So word to Kevin O'Connell for the Vikings. I have, I'm a big football nerd. So one thing that he says is that he likes to make all the plays look the same pre-snap as in like runs look like pass, pass looks like run, stuff like that. So what we're getting right here is we're making this look like a floater because I'm doing it the exact same way. I'm not going to lollygag it. I'm not going to approach this any different way than I would as if I was going to attack the floater, but then I'm just going to stop. And as you can see, it draws him out further and he's ready to go and contest that. Then I'm going to run to the offhand where I get the really good speed boosts. And then boom, we're running to that offhand, getting to a easy meter dunk because he's on my side because I baited him out for that floater because he's already seen it time and time again. So there's going to be like actions and reactions or just counters to pretty much everything I can do right here. And once again, he's playing too low. So we're going to be able to float it on him. 8% contest right there. It's quite easy to hit those, though, with the slash take, if we're being completely honest. And I can only imagine if your layup rating was high, bro. That'd be insane. So anyway, filling up the meter right there again. Great efficiency on that. He actually ended up being closer in this game than anybody else I played in the 1v1 court this night. <laughs> so shout out to him for once again. It's just kind of hard for me to guard small point guards in this one score. But anyway, into the next gameplay. 
So with this one, we're going to start off a little bit more hunting the dunks. As you can see, I'm going for that triple threat. Now we're into the offhand movement. We're going to be able to just kind of get into that restricted area and boom, we get to the easy dunk. Now, my dunking prowess, if you will, with the build is going to bait him to play a little bit lower. As you can see, he's like, okay, Mr. Peer inside, you're going to have to show me now, buddy. I'm just protecting the paint. So boom, we're going for that floater off rip. And now is, you know, this is the clip where we got him <laughs> jumping at the next floater. And it's the exact example of what I'm trying to tell you guys here, where, as you can see, like, I'm just going to bait it this time. I'm going to run in and act like I'm going to do it. And boom, he goes flying out, jumping at it. Now, your rebuttal to this could be, well, Laker, what happens when you play someone who just gets up on you tight from the beginning of the play? I am a pure slasher, fellas. That's literally what my whole intention with the build is, is to beat people when they're up super tight on me. That, that's like the whole point. And again, like obviously this build is also, for that matter, not even created for playing ones or creating on my own all the way. If I'm playing a pure lock or something like that, who's all up on me, generally I'm playing on team related courts that are more like threes, fives, stuff like that, where I can go to my point guard to now, like I've drawn the attention of the pure lock. Now I'm giving someone else the opportunity to create with not the pure lock on them. And we're able to just, you know, get busy, get to work pretty much. So anyway, what I'm trying to get at here is that this is all I need the build to be able to do. And that this floater game opens up a whole lot for me. And Sabonis versus Jokic is a pretty big deal. Now, I will tell you guys, if you're out there and you're not looking to hit starter three or anything like that, yet you still want to be able to access the float game and you're a big man, Jokic is very good. And it's actually a very overall, like for the hop spins and euros and stuff like that, minus the spins. It's a really bad spin package. But for the euros and hops, it's actually pretty solid. And I would say also for the floater, it's still pretty decent as well. Now, again, we, we have a lot of different things that we're working on with creating right here. So like right here, you can see I'm running slightly to this ball hand and then I'm hitting that behind the back right here. Now, me as a slasher, period, this is how I always try and function where if I like kind of fake my ball movement to the left right here, they're going to overplay this and then I can just hyper react over to the right. And as you can see, this works generally 10 times out of 10, if I'm being completely honest. If it's a semi mediocre defender, if they're gapping, that's how I try and approach people is I will bait the ball hand movement to the side that I'm not actually going to go to. And then with a good behind the back, shout out to Jason Tatum, shout out to the comment that told me to put Tatum on. This is gonna really do well at flipping the ball hand into that off hand and boom, we get to the easy dunk, we get takeover off that and now obviously we know how this goes. Slash take, I mean, combine the float game with combine the bigger dunk meter I get off it too. I mean, it's over from here. Again, you can see Hezzy, I'm drawing him out. This is exactly what I just told you guys earlier is if I can draw people out to guarding me super tight, that's what I intend to do with my dribble moves is be able to beat people when they're playing high. Once again, even if he's gonna play high right there, that triple threat will absolutely kill into the Hezzy with that Anthony Edwards right there. Now he's playing low, so I'm like, okay, maybe we can bait this floater again. And as you can see, we low key do, I really should have committed to it, but I wanted to at least like get some idea for how he was gonna play it. Now, unfortunately, I ended up taking too much time on that. We're gonna go ahead and once again, skip offense from him. He ends up just missing a wide open shot, obviously. But into the next possession, we're going with that dunk meter right here. Again, we're just getting him to the side. That's my main objective is to get to those meters. And if he's on the hip of me or he's in that kind of blinders area that we're always talking about with the dunk meter, that's when we're gonna go with it. When he's straight on like this, that's when we're going to the float game. And as you can see, if you want to assume what that contest is, you can go ahead and do so. Because look at this. I mean, we nail it right on the head as far as like the timing on this. And that's what is nice about the Sabonis package is that, as you can see, you do get this animation very specifically, very consistently. But anyway, I'll let you guys see this, but I do want to back up real quick. It was a 40% contest. I do want to go back to the one that I just missed before that, though. So with this one, you can see... It was me attacking from a really a really bad angle. This is why I was telling you guys too, what I'm generally doing with this floater is starting from the middle and kind of just walking into it and I end up taking a floater from like about right here or about right here. It's generally gonna be toward where my lethal zones are because as you can see, when I do it in the middle of the, uh, middle of the court and sometimes like way too downhill and not far away enough from the basket, it gives me this running hook animation instead. You guys can lab this if you want, you can test it out. As you can see, I mistimed it really bad because I wasn't expecting it either. But again, I found that the sweet spot for going for this floater is going to be like right in this area right here. It's about kind of like free throw line extended to like this quadrant of the court, if you will, where it's kind of like the, the wing slash elbow, I guess. 
And then, yeah, like I said, I, I prefer to do it just in these areas, but boom. I mean, 40% contest right in his face, <laughs> slash taking everything. I can only imagine how much powerful, that, how much more powerful this would be with like Hoff Pro Touch and maybe like 88 driving layup or something like that. Not to mention, if you guys are looking for good floaters, I have a whole video on layup packages in 2K24 on my channel. And as you can see, it gets a good body up bump. This is the type of stuff I was talking about I would face with like more bigs per se. And that's why it's going to be a little bit easier playing them though, where they would sit back and just play paint D a little bit more. Right there, I probably should have just been attacking the floaters a little bit more. But anyway, to stay on topic of what I was talking about, I have a video of showing just grades on every layup in the game, if you would like to see that. I tested everything from spins, hops, lays, you know, the X button lays, the euros, the gathers on just anything that you can get. And then also like scoops as well, floaters. I tested all of them and gave them a letter grade. So if you would like to check that out, feel free to. It's just I tested every layup in NBA 2K24, so you don't have to. But again, this was one of the ones that I highlighted the most. And now I finally have it because I hit starter three. And it's quite the grind, I must say, too, fellas. So... If you can't get this, and as I've already mentioned, you have to settle for Jokic. I don't think it's that big a deal. I've already made a video if you want to see the power of floaters. That's the one where I tested it with the Jokic on display as well. And that, that was still a really good display. But anyway, again, like I'm still here for when people are, you know, just going to be trying to get up on me tight. And I'm, that's my whole job is to get to the paint as a slasher. Check this one out, though. This is me kind of trolling right here. So if you hold your left stick backwards and hold your right stick down for the floater, you'll get this animation. It's like a standing hook or like a standing floater, if you will. And this is going to use your driving layup as the rating function. And it's very good for that matter, even still. So if you're in a situation where maybe you're playing with a peer inside on your team who's camping paint and you ended up maybe let's say let's say like this, you went for the drive, but the center is like sitting paint and he kind of intimidated you out of going for that floater or a dunk or whatever the case may be. So now instead he jumped maybe he showed his hand or maybe he stayed down low and you don't feel comfortable with mashing because then at that point he's one jump away from it so now you just go ahead and hold your left stick back and hold down on the right stick you can get that standing floater and that's going to be still a very good range to the point where the big who's playing your center on the block can't contest this right here and it's still a really good driving layup you know meter size so anyway that is all for the video i hope you all enjoyed if you did feel free to drop a like so if you're new to on notice all that good stuff and like always try just one of 2,000 likes if you made it to the end of the video put sabonis in the comments so it supports me all the way through <laughs> and shout out to sabonis I, I honestly i think it's a really cool thing that they use something like what he actually does have with very crafty finishing in this game to actually translate into the game because i mean if you go look at his close shot his driving layup all that stuff i mean <laughs> his stuff is through the roof as far as his finishing goes and that is what he is. He's a finesse finisher. And obviously, you know, he's pretty freaking slow and <laughs> it needs to use his crafty ability to be able to, you know, get some get something out of him. Same way with Jokic, obviously, as well. So both of them have very crafty floater animations and that translates to real life pretty well as well. So anyway, that's off video. Hope you enjoyed. None of that. Take these, man. Peace.